Lolos, welcome back to my channel. Guys, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, click the bell to be a part of the notification squad. If you're not a part of the Chatterbox, you can click the link in the description bar. It is $1.99 to join and you do have to be at least 18 years old. If you want merch, there's merch also in below and in the description bar. However, I will be updating my merch soon, but I just haven't had the chance to get to it. Um, but with all that being said, I am here with baby Marley and baby Marley is painted by me and no, she is not a boy. She's a girl. She's just bald and wearing blue. <laughs> um, so Marley is in a wake up. She's a, she didn't want to turn her head, like. <laughs> but um, she's an awake little one. She is uh, more of uh, in between a preemie and newborn size. Um, so, yeah, that's her. She's only 17 inches or something like that, but she's a good size for me. And Marley was basically one of my experimental babies. Um, I... Well, I fell in love with the kit for myself, but I decided since I was painting it for myself, I'd take some chances. I'd play with color and I'd play with doing the dry skin effect and, you know, just little craziness that I wanted to do. And I was definitely happy with her skin tone. Um, dry skin effect did good on the feet. I kind of went overboard on the tummy, but every time someone comes over and see her laying out they always say oh her stomach looks so real so i don't know i guess this came out okay but um one of the questions that i get a lot on this channel um oh let me tell you a little bit more about marley if you guys don't know so because she's my little baby i had an extra um little cloth body it's chocolate it's not to match her skin tone of course but she has a signature on her bum bum. That's um, a little embroidered signature on her bum bum. And she does have a heartbeat. And like I got my hand right here and it's just thumping. So um, she is a little special one. Sometimes when I do these type babies where I experiment and I make them for myself, I feel very uncomfortable selling them so she may end up being a baby that's here forever we will see um plus i i don't know i really just i really love marley um but one of the questions that i get all the time is where do you buy your your kids from where do you where do you buy your dolls from and i get that on almost every other post video or whatever so number one um the simple answer, I'm going to answer that question first, is most of my dolls, I paint myself. Um, if they're vinyl, I usually send them out to be rooted. Um, I don't typically root my own vinyl myself just yet. I am going to eventually. Um, but my silicone babies, I root myself. Um, Sometimes I do buy from other artists. Normally, the artists that I buy from are artists that are doing something extraordinary that or something that I just feel like I can't do myself. So I, and I just love their paint style. And so I usually buy from just different artists. And I find these artists on Facebook primarily. Um, Instagram, sometimes I've been seeing new artists and I'm like, oh, I never. And then I look them up and I look them up on all platforms because I want to know a, is their work consistent? B, are they consistently in the community? Is this someone that is actually putting out babies, delivering them, and people are actually getting their dolls? And see what their price range is usually the babies go for. So I know if I'm buying on second market, if I'm in the ball game of what I would have paid if I got it from them, or, or is the price up higher, or is it down lower? So I know what I'm getting as far as a customer. Am I getting a deal? Am I getting ripped off? Or is it that her dolls are so high demand that they charge a little surplus and it's still worth it? Because I will pay more than the original person actually paid if it's something that I can't get my hands on and it's 
the value is there within the quality of the artist's work. So I know a lot of artists get a little, you know, fuzzy wuzzy if someone charged more than what um, they actually paid. I don't have a problem with that because I feel like these are collectible items and they're limited. And if you can't get that same exact particular item and that person sees more value in it, and they want to put a price on it. It's, it's their belonging at that point. It belongs to them. So whatever they feel it's valued at, so be it. And then there's always other factors that come into play. They got fees that's going to come out. Um, they have to pay for shipping. They have to pay, pay for new clothing. Sometimes people, I know usually me, in most cases, not always, but if I'm selling it for a decent price, I may include extra new clothes. So it's a lot of other things that go into play as into why the price might change from the very first price. So I don't really get into that and I don't I don't care. I charge what I want to charge for my dolls and if my customer charge $500, $800 more, so be it. Um, that, that, that customer may have gotten it in a giveaway. They may have gotten it at a discounted price because, you know, they bought from me so many times or they may have got, you know, while I was doing some type of special or I might have thought it was something off about the doll so I charged less but really it really wasn't and they decided they want to charge whatever. Anyway, that's prices, not about where we get it from. So let's move on to question number two. Where do I buy my kits from? Vinyl kits, I primarily buy from MacPherson. To be honest, I have bought from Irresistible, but I've had, they take forever to get to you. And um, I've just had different, my experiences has not been that great with them, but I will buy from them if that's the only way I can get something. Um, the last kit that I got from Irresistible, it had the wrong arms. I didn't know that until I finished painting the doll completely, which was my Lulu. Um, and it was, it took a lot to get that replaced and it took forever for it to get to me. So I try to avoid buying from Irresistibles, but they're there and they like the Pinlaw kits seem like they're the only ones that really carry them in the U.S. From what I see, um, it could be some other ones out there, but anyway, um, but MacPherson is really fast usually. Um, I, you know, there was a time where I was irritated that they didn't list that it was German vinyl versus just regular vinyl. Um, but they updated their website, you know, um, after that communication and stuff like that on that kit. Hopefully they'll do it on mostly, on do it on all their other kits moving forward. But I, you know, I don't know, you know. And, um... They seem to have a lot of everything. Bountiful Baby is where I buy my supplies, like glass beads, polyfill. Oh, I buy some of my polyfill from Walmart, I won't lie, but you know, like the really soft stuff, I buy that from Bountiful Baby. Um, you can get everything, magnets, my paints, brushes, you can get it from there. I get paints and stuff from other art stores as well, but mainly Bountiful Baby. Um, what else? Um, who else? So, and then also, which is very important, guys, I buy directly from the sculptor if they're within the U.S., the same as me. Um, I usually buy directly from the sculptor if I can, um, just simply because they, it's just nice when you can support the sculptor directly because you know, I feel like the sculptor should get all their money for their work when they can. So, of course, Matt Fierson is not selling their kits for free. So, or, so they, the, the sculptors don't get, um, they don't get as much money for the kits that's bought from other um, suppliers. They do that for us and our convenience. And so they don't have to, you know, ship all over the world and stuff like that. So I support both companies uh, 
like MacPherson and sculptors, but when it comes to the kits itself, if I can buy directly from the the uh, the sculptor like Laura Tudor Ross, Claire Taylor, uh, who else is here in the U.S. Um, I don't know, but people like that, I'll, I'll buy directly from them. Um, next thing, silicone babies. Silicone babies, where you buy silicone baby kits? Oh, that is just um, a challenge all in itself. But I do like the fact that MacPherson is also carrying some silicone kits. My problem with MacPherson um, buying kits from MacPherson is the fact that they do not list the most important information that I care to know is who is actually pouring each kit. So, um, like, I know that there are certain kits that they are pouring because it's, like, it advertised at some point and saying that. But I need it in the description, in the writing, so in case they switch up on who's pouring, I would know and not be like, oh, this don't feel like, you know the way that so-and-so pour this kit and pour, you know, pour their silicone. And they'd be like, oh, well, we have a different pour. See, when that stuff is not in writing, you have nothing to stand on. I need to know who's pouring the kit because the pour is important to me as a painter. So that's my problem with Matt Ferrison. Um, and also a lot of the kits in the past did not have open mouths. And I am not in 2021 buying a kit without an open mouth a lot of people be like oh it's easy to open i'm not a sculptor i'm not gonna pretend to i don't cut nothing i'm just a painter so call it what it is kudos to y'all that can do it and snatch tongues out the back of their throats and all that and stuff we love you gosh guys you're great but um yeah no i don't do that so that was one of my issues but i what i love about it is that i can go on there they don't have to like me or know anything about me and I can go on and purchase a kit. Versus with silicone, it's very politician. Did I say that? Is that a word? Politicky? It's politicky. That's the word. It's politicky buying silicone kits a lot of times from a lot of these other sculptors. I mean, a lot of sculptors individually because if their friend paints and she don't like you or she's scared you might outpaint the kit over her, then they'll tell you it's unavailable or won't sell to you or if they don't want their kit paint anyway um let me start this over just in case i have to edit that out some sculptors pick and choose who they sell to some sculptors don't want um certain people painting their kit so you may not be able to and it doesn't mean that you did anything wrong or did anything to them maybe their friends just don't like you or whatever the case may be so then they um so then they don't they they won't sell to you so um you know it's like you kind of gotta be in the in group to get certain sculptures kits and i don't like that and then also with kits um the other thing is the prices um MacPherson have the prices straight out. Um, some of the other people like Lillian Breville, Claire Teller, their prices is always laid straight out. What their kits is, it's pretty standard across the board. Most of all their kits are the same price. If it's sleep, if it's awake, if it's got the drink wet, if it's got the armature. I don't even really have to look at the prices. Most of the time I just automatically know, okay, that's a sleeper with a drink and wet. The drink and wet is, you know, extra 500. The armatures are 300 if it's the elbow, 500 if it's the full. I may be quoting a little bit wrong, but I think I'm right. Um, it's usually like 22.50 or 21.50 for the full. And get this, Lillian kits cost more than Claire's. Imagine that. But anyway, that ain't none of my business. But there are the prices are set for you, and so I typically like that because it's out for it versus me messaging jubilee and jubilee is like um yeah so the kit is 1900 blank for super soft and then my girlfriend just got one from you super soft for 1400 so where did the extra 500 dollars come from yeah 
that stuff happens it really happens so a lot of people talk about the scamming you know and all the other stuff but those are the other things that happens in the community so i i really am encouraging more of the you know buying it from the store type thing i really really loved the idea when matt Pearson started selling silicone i was like yes so um but unfortunately it's always gonna come with some pros and cons and maybe that's an easy fix for them to just list you know who's pouring it the options out there you know it, it's it's an easy fix um hopefully in time that will be something that will be included in their description i've never wrote them personally to you know ask them and um but because and even some of these other people that sell these kits they don't really tell some of them have do not list what type of silicone it is like if it's soft silicone or ecoflex 20 ecoflex 10 is it marshmallow blend and marshmallow blend of course is something made up um <laughs> you get this hat it's just not gonna stay on is it polka um marshmallow blend is something that's just a made-up term but it just means that it's really really soft i consider marshmallow blend as the kind that feel like memory foam like you push it and it take a while a while to slow rise but apparently some other people consider that just being really really soft whatever um I just don't want no firm silicone at this point but that's just me but um so yeah so I like that um you know because it makes it even playing feel just like the vinyl so I usually buy my kits lately over the past primarily my kits have came from Lily and Breville or Claire Teller but I've been expanding I've had kits from um I've had kids from uh, Maria Grover, Kristen Inger, uh, Elsie Rodriguez, um, Silicon Studios, um, DMH Studios, um, a DHM studio, <laughs> Studios, um, and who else? Um, Christina Vassal. I'm trying to think of who else. Um, so that's eight different people. So Claire Teller, Lillian Breville, Maria Grover, um, Christina Vassal, um, oh, Rachel Farrell, um, Elsie Rodriguez, Silicon Studios. Who else? Am I missing somebody else? Oh, Sherry Bowden. I had her kit before. Who else? Who else? Who else? I don't know. But I've had a couple kits. And, you know, some I've only had one of their kits. And some I've painted more than one of their kits. Um, but primarily, most of my kits, you guys know, have been that I've been painting. Like, I haven't, I haven't painted a lot of silicone, so... Um, it's usually been one, 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 but then, you know, multiples of the Lily and Breville kits and then a few of the actual Claire kits. I haven't painted a whole lot of those as well. Um, cause she hasn't put out like a whole lot of kits. I do have another one here of hers. I have the Alex to paint. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much where I buy my silicone babies from. I don't like to buy silicone without seeing movement, the blank kids. I need to see head movement, the bending, the flexibility. If it's for me personally, even if it's for my, you know, just to paint the cell, I want because it's hard for me to sell something that I don't personally like myself. I mean, it's kind of like hard for me to be like, oh, this is great when I'm cringing and hate it. <laughs> so I don't know I'm a bad liar so that's that anyway this is a long video hope you guys enjoyed it hopefully I can make it shorter when I cut some of the parts out because maybe I said too much and I just don't want to get into all of that anymore 
since I'm over it. Um, yeah, but that's primarily where I get my kids from. Facebook is where I normally look for my kids. Um, but it's really hard. I, I have a hard time looking, finding silicone kits. Um, the, and the wait time for a silicone kit sometimes can be horrendous. I mean, you gotta, you gotta wait six, seven weeks, sometime three, four months for the kit. It's, it's hard with silicone versus vinyl. So I probably won't ever paint a lot of silicone because of, it's still not a very smooth, um, process of buying it and painting it and all that stuff so yeah that's it all right guys bye oh she never did put on her little pants it's okay